On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the Russian cruiser Muscova is on fire in the Black Sea. I'm your host, Sal Mercaglano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So reports came out today that the Russian Slava-class cruiser Muscova has been hit supposedly by two Ukrainian Neptune anti-ship missiles. Uh, the vessel suffered cataclysmic explosions, probably from some ordnance on board, the vessels on fire and supposedly abandoned. So let's look at the information that we have on her and place this into a little bit of historical context. So this is the image of Moscova. She was actually the Slava, the lead class of these uh, cruisers and just mean looking cruisers. I got to say, these things came out in the 80s and I can remember seeing one in Norfolk in 1989, and they were really designed to counter United States supercarriers. In particularly, what was uh, made them really dangerous are those 16 anti-ship missiles, eight on each side. You can see uh, four twin launchers right there, right above the number 121. Uh, now they carry Vulcan anti-ship missiles, really an impressive amount of firepower and the russians had deployed three of these cruisers to the region one in the black sea and two in the mediterranean uh one came from the north sea one came uh, from the arctic uh from their northern fleet and the other came from the pacific but slava has been operating in the black sea uh she also carries on board uh s300 anti-aircraft uh, missiles uh, she's got a twin 130 millimeter cannon on the front along with point defense weapons and the sinking has really historical implications i would argue uh, the closest historical one i can find is the attack on the german cruiser blucher this is blucher here sinking in a fjord on route to oslo in april of 1940 the norwegians had established a shore facility that was used to guard the fjord, the entrances to Oslo. They were able to hit the ship with several high caliber, uh, large caliber, excuse me, uh, shells, and then hit it with some torpedoes that eventually led to the capsizing of the Blucher in the channel. Uh, one of the newest heavy cruisers in the German fleet was lost in this attack on Norway in 1940. The other thing that this kindles back is the Falklands War of 1982. Uh, I was in high school when this happened. I know I'm old, uh, but uh, I remember this headline story in Newsweek, The Empire Strikes Back, The Falkland Crisis. And in that crisis, we saw Exocet cruise missiles being used against British vessels. We saw the sinking of Coventry, Sheffield, Ardent, uh, Atlantic Conveyor, and other vessels getting hit. Uh, really, the last full-scale naval war we saw was back in 1982, although we've seen plenty others. The Stark getting hit in 1987 by a pair of exocets, the Persian Gulf War with Tripoli and Princeton getting hit by mines. So we've seen uh, naval wars being executed before, but the attack on Slava is really going to be a unique one. So I want to highlight some stories for you that are coming out on this. This is the G Captain story uh, by Reuters that's talking about it. The United States believes the Russian warship Moskova is still dealing with a fire and the ship is believed to experience significant damage. A senior official said on Thursday, the warship, a Soviet era missile cruiser, is still believed to be afloat and the US is under the assumption the cruiser is heading to Sevastopol, that's in Crimea. Our assessment is that she still appears to be battling the fire on board. Russians said the crew of the warship has been evacuated and measures were being taken to tow the vessel back to port. Uh, USNI, the U.S. Naval Institute, has a similar story talking about it. And in the story, they also featured the weapon that may have been responsible for it, which is this. These are Neptune cruise ships, uh, the, uh, cruise missiles, excuse me. They are a derivation of the Russian and previous Soviet KH-35 anti-ship missile, although these missiles may have extended range to be able to reach out. And we're not exactly sure what again has happened, but this is the type of weapon that the 
Ukrainians have been trying to get to bear against some of those Russian vessels. I uh, want to talk about some other stories here and some other issues. So this is from Naval News. This is H.I. Uh, Sutton at Covert Shores site, which is one of the best, I think, out here. And right here, you see what we know the latest on this. On the evening of April 13th, rumors surfaced on social media that Ukrainian forces had attacked the Russian cruiser Moskova, caused severe damage on board the ship. In the beginning, people were skeptical. I, I was. I was really skeptical on this one because this just really seems outside the bounds. And we've had some issues with Russian ships getting hit. Uh, and it says here, because of similar but unverified claims about Russian Navy ships hit, patrol cruiser, the Velisi Baikov and the frigate Admiral Essen were rumored to be damaged, but such rumors turned out not to be true. At midnight, several Russian media sources, including state-owned uh, uh, RIA Novatsi and the TASS agency, confirmed an explosion aboard the Moskova. While the Russian Ministry of Defense didn't met, release a statement on the incident, the source of the Russian media was the Defense Ministry. Uh, accordingly, Moscow suffered a detonation from its own ammunition and the crew was completely evacuated. TASS agencies shared similar statements to define the reason as a blast of ammunition. A fire and subsequent munition blast have caused serious damage to the missile cruiser. The crew was evacuated, the Russian Defense Ministry said on Thursday. So was this a weapons issue on board or was it a hit by a Neptune anti-surface missile that detonated some of those large Vulcan anti-ship missiles or other munitions on board. Uh, those anti-ship missiles have large warheads, large fuel for their missiles. Uh, this thing is a powder keg waiting to go off. And you can see it right here. This is the uh, information from the Odessa Regional State Administration who says uh, they have confirmed that the missile Cruiser Moscow today went exactly where it was sent by our border guards on Snake Island. Neptune missiles guarding the Black Sea caused very serious damage to the Russian ship. Now, this is the Ukrainians talking about this. But the story I really want to come to is this one. And this is a series of tweets posted by Alessi Padalano over at the, he's a professor of war and strategy in East Asia over in the war studies program at King's college. Uh, I've never met Alessio, but his tweet thread this morning just made me want to come on and talk about it. So this is a couple of hours old, but I just want to go through it because I think it's a really systematic look at the issue. So again, he talks about the very beginning here about the reports, and then he starts going into here. First off, the ship itself, it's not a spring chicken. That's true. The ship was built back in the 80s. It's venerable, battle-hardened, major combatant. It was used in the Russian invasion of Georgia in 2008. Continue on here. This is relevant, is relevant because it raises a question about battle readiness and overall operational condition. A ship first commissioned in 1983 recommissioned in 2000 and was supposed to undergo a refit and upgrade in 2016, but it did not. So a question about having older vessels in frontline use, this is something very appropriate, I would think, for the U.S. Navy today, as we're looking about retiring Ticonderoga-class cruisers, which were also built in the 1980s. The extent to which the ship was in less than ideal state is debatable, but a couple of things matter here. This is the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet of the Russian Navy. Its primary mission was to secure sea control and exploit. It saw action on very early on in the invasion. Perhaps the most iconic symbolism around the role of the Moskva is captured in the shelling of Snake Island with the now image of the Ukrainian soldiers responding in kind to the ship, hailing them to surrender the ultimate David versus Goliath challenge, grit and determination. And they remember initially, and even I reported it, that it was believed that the 16 Ukrainians on board uh, or on the island, Snake Island, were killed. However, they weren't. They were captured, but still didn't stop them from telling uh, the ship to go basically pound sand. Let's be clear, though, this wasn't just about symbolism. Snake Island occupied a key strategic position for any operation versus Odessa to take place. The Russian Navy did what one would expect them to do early on, secure it, as the map shows, is an important place to prevent ops versus Odessa. 
Further, the closure of the Bosphorus to all warships, it also meant that the ship would be there, be the main asset available to support Russian naval ops in the Black Sea. Couple that with the current shift in operational focus south, this is not just any ship. This is a key asset. This is Moscow. Goes on, so what happened and why does it matter? We know that official sources that two Neptune missiles hit the ship and a major fire ensued. The ship was operating incredibly close to shore, which is remarkable given the limited point defense systems it has. This raises questions about familiar themes in the invasion so far, the Russian concept of operations, Russian confidence and underestimation of the Ukrainians. We've seen this throughout the war. Russian preparation and readiness. The ship had no real business so close to shore. It clearly underestimated ops risk. He goes on here. The dynamics confirm an old truth. Fire is absolutely deadly threat to naval combatant. And if your crew and systems are not in tip top shape, that's where the difference between success and defeat stands in war at sea. Covert shores here is very helpful. Again, covert shores, which is uh, H.I. Hutton, give you this link right here. He talks about this. Russia's most powerful warship in the Black Sea is operating in a pattern. It was operating in a continuous kind of systematic operational pattern, doing it time and time again, which allowed the Ukrainians to plan against it. Alessio goes on, on the other hand, we need to be very cautious about suggesting that sinking a ship is easy or that there are lessons for any others in here, whether NATO, China, or anyone else. If I hear anyone making silly comparisons with Taiwan, I might ex explore, sorry, I digress. Uh, I think he's right. It's too easy to extrapolate this. The one lesson that we can draw from these naval events is that sea denial is a real thing and it can be done relatively cheaply. If geography and strategic objectives allow it, this here from Simsec is spot on and absolutely on the money. And I will reference this over here, the uh, Center for International Maritime Security, which I, I partner with on several issues. I've written articles for them and they list me as a partner is right now doing Russia Ukraine week. And many of the stories they have deal with this uh, reconsidering Russian maritime warfare and anti access denial strategy for Ukraine. That's the story in particular here that really discusses this. How do you deny Russia uh, the use of the area? Uh, Alessio goes on here. So as I pointed out here early on today, there are three very important points to consider. Others as well, but once things are, are clearer. First, militarily, the Russians are in a pickle on amphibious plans on Odessa. Yeah, the Russians do not use their amphibious forces like the US storming ashore at D-Day with Tom Hanks in Saving Private Ryan. That's not what they're gonna do. They're gonna use them for over the shore logistics. But as I mentioned in a previous video, right here. The Russians found out that using their vessels to bring supplies in can also be a problem because they were targeted and we saw a Russian ship sink at the dock at a port in the Sea of Azov. Two, politically why Russia could lose its flagship in the theater where it has sea control is going to be hard or even to hide it. Symbolically, Moscow is on fire. This is Ukraine's response to Snake Island. That is David exposing Goliath's disorientation. More will be written on this. Uh, this is one of the most severe naval losses since the Falklands War. I shall come back to this too in due time. For now, expect some more turbulence on the naval front as weapons arrive. Denial will be on the menu. Tonight, Russian commanders will feel less secure as they reflect upon the fact that the Black Sea is no longer their take. It's a box with no way out. It's where denial has exposed the limits of control. Things have got much harder. Signing off for now, thank you for reading. Again, I think Alessio Padalano does a great job encapsulating this all in this Twitter thread. Man, I, I just I, I'm really impressed by the scope and scale that Alessio goes at this topic. I also want to highlight this. H.I. Uh, Sutton from Covert Shores did a great little video that synopsizes what Moskova Slava class cruiser is. Great little 15-minute uh, video right here. I'll have it in the show notes. I'll also have the link to Alessio's uh, very informative tweet there too, so you can go to it directly and read it. Uh, this 
channel again looks at global shipping but one of the things we've been talking about consistently here is how the black sea has become a war zone and mines and now anti-ship missiles will make the black sea even more cost prohibitive for vessels to go into it it's going to be harder for commercial ships to get war risk insurance to enter the black sea whether ship companies even want to do this that means not only is Ukrainian exports not coming out in grains and crops, but Russian exports, Central Asian exports are not going to be able to come out of the Black Sea because it's going to be too expensive for ships to get insurance and operate in the area. What we're going to see is less vessel traffic in the Black Sea. The volume of trade we're seeing is basically gone, obviously, in the Gulf of Odessa. Ships have turned off their AOS tracking going through the Sea of Azov as long as Mariupol is still being held. But just the volume of traffic coming out of the Straits here up to uh, Novorovsk. I, I apologize. I'm, my Russian is terrible. But we're seeing less and less ships coming up here. Again, this region attaches over to the Caspian Sea region and even further into the Central Asian re region for getting cargo out the entire central part of Russia along the Don River here brings traffic down into the Sea of Azov, into the Black Sea. Again, the Black Sea may look like a cul-de-sac off of the Mediterranean, not vital for world trade, but what we're seeing is 19% of the world's grain comes out of this region between Ukraine and Russia, and it is vital for this. And the recent attack on Moscova just highlights the danger for commercial shipping in the region. Yes, I know the Ukrainians potentially targeted Muscova, but the errant missiles and, and mines that could be flowing in the area are just gonna prohibit a lot more commercial traffic. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, go ahead over to our Patreon page and help support the channel. Until our next video, Sal signing off.